What's up, everybody? My name is Jacob Deaton, and I am so glad you are back with us for another episode of Southern Wedding Professionals. And today I have a really, really cool guy that I already like through the beginning conversations that we had before we started rolling. Um, his name is Justin Ray, and he's got an incredible brand new uh, product that he's offering the wedding industry in the uh, ways of a mobile bar. It's called the Stumbling Stallion Mobile Bar. Justin, thank you so much for being here today. Yeah, man, thank you. Appreciate you really having us on today. That's great. Absolutely, man. Um, I'm so glad that we connected. I'm so glad that I saw your uh, Instagram profile um, and that we were able to connect this way and, um, and get you on this podcast. Um, so uh, maybe just, I, I obviously I gave a pretty good description as to what it is, but maybe run us through um, a little bit about your business. Okay. Um, so we started out with a 1988 uh, WW horse trailer, actually made in Oklahoma. And this thing was trash. It had been used for years and years and years as, you know, a horse trailer, what it was made for. So we had this wild idea that we wanted to turn this thing into a mobile bar or something that's really classy, really nice, and uh, but still give that rustic feel to it. So uh, it took us about nine months to get everything going. Once we got everything going on this thing and got, you know, got it put together, we did all this ourselves. Um, you know, we've brought it out to the market. So we've been in the market now for about a month and a half and uh, trying to get our name out there, let people know who we are and, you know, go to open houses and do all that kind of jazz that everybody does when they first get into the business. So, uh, <laughs> you know, that's pretty much where we are right now. That's awesome. Um, so you actually hand cut the trailer yourself like you did all the renovations to the trailer and everything yes me and my wife did it all uh we had we took this thing to have it same blasted and when i tore it apart i mean it looked like something from the apocalypse i mean it just, <laughs> it, there was nothing left of this thing the only sheet metal that's original to it is the dome that's in the front and the only reason that it's original is i couldn't replace it i didn't have an english wheel to be able to make another one. so uh, that's the only reason that it's still there. But everything else on this thing is completely hand fabricated by us. Wow. I um, wish I had such skills. Um, about every one of my family members uh, got the skill of being able to, you know, tear apart something and put it back together. And um, I got the skill of playing guitar, as you can see by my head. Well, but that's, hey, uh, that's a skill you know, in and of itself, brother. It is, it is, but you know, uh, you know, the grass is always green on the other side. I go home and my cousins always have engines completely torn apart in their garage and they're like, oh yeah, I'm replacing this and doing that and upgrading this. And I just, uh, what a cool skill to be able to use your hands and like, and mold something. So what gave you the inspiration to start this? Like when you looked at this trailer um, or, I mean, was it, did you see something that somebody was doing something similar and you're like, well, I could do that or what kind of brought this whole like idea of getting involved in the business? Exactly what you said. So that's how we kind of got started. My wife was looking one day on Pinterest, which is like the spurn of my existence. You know I mean? That's, that's <laughs> always something, you know, Hey, can you make this or whatever? So, uh, but she saw it and she brought it to my attention. She said, you know, this is really cool. And I looked at it and looked at several of them. I mean, there's there's quite a few of these things around. They're not really as popular as what one might think, but there's there's several of them around. So I saw it and I was like, I can do that. You know, I, I mean, I've, I've rebuilt stuff before and, and that looked pretty straightforward. I can do that. So then the hunt began, you know, find a, find a suitable candidate to be able to do this. And so we did. And it was kind of a winter project and you know, just followed it all the way through. So how, so it took you, how many months did it take you? To it was about nine it? months, really, from where we started to where we actually finished and started getting it out there. Now, we actually finished before we kind of got our name out there a little bit, started getting into events and stuff because of the pandemic and all that stuff that was going on. It was just kind of a difficult time to be able to, to do that, you know, be able to get your name out there in a meaningful way that people are actually going to be receptive because people weren't doing anything, you know, really at the time. Right. Yeah. It's, um, that's been a, that's, uh, we got to get to that topic in a minute. Cause I'm sure, I'm sure everybody has lots to say about that. And everyone does that I speak to, but, um, well, that's really cool. Pinterest is like, that's the game. Did you know that Pinterest is, um, I think the second most profitable, um, uh, social media platform, I think behind Facebook, um, as far as people actually spending money uh, while they're on the platform. Pretty interesting, right? 
I didn't know that. That is that is really interesting. I mean, and obviously, you know, aside from the honey do lists that come from, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, right. uh, from, you know, from Pinterest uh, posts and stuff like that, um, people really do buy things on Pinterest. So, um, you know, quick marketing tip, probably want to keep posting things on Pinterest about your, uh, your mobile bar. Oh, yeah, fantastic. So when you were coming up with, um, you know, the idea of like the inside and you were kind of like sculpting, like how you wanted to do it, like what were some of the main things that you wanted to make sure that you were able to check um, the box for as far as being able, um, you know, just to make sure that the design uh, was, uh, was good for being a mobile bar? So, you know, I wanted plenty of lighting on the inside of this thing. I wanted it to be bright. I didn't want to be able to pull this thing out later in the evening and, and people really not be able to see it that well on evening mm -hmm. weddings or fall weddings where it gets dark early or something like that. So lighting was a big thing. We also wanted, you know, wanted it to be classy, but also wanted it to be rustic. So I don't know if you noticed the bars that we have or not, but they're actually flip out bars. So uh, those are, they're two inches thick. They're uh, black walnut is what they are with a live edge bar. So um, you know, we wanted that rustic feel, but we also wanted, you know, something classic, something that was really nice, something that was really just, it, it could appeal for a lot of different things, not just a wedding. Mm. So tell me a little, like, where, uh, I think I missed this in the beginning, maybe, where are you guys actually located? We're in center Alabama, which is northeast Alabama. Uh, we're about 20 miles from Rome, Georgia. So I don't oh, know if you're so familiar with Rome. There. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's really nice. Uh, you know, we've got some really nice countryside over here. This is a little farming community for the most part. So, you know, finding horse trailers around here and that sort of stuff is not really that hard to be able to come <laughs> up with, you know. Um, being in Atlanta, it's a little harder to find, but you don't have to go far. You can about 40 miles. Oh, no, out of no, town. you go over to Canton or something like that, man. You're right in the thick of it. Right, it's true. Uh, the, um, you know, Northern Alabama, man, that is um, that is a part of the country that I feel like is so underrated. Um, you know, basically, when you get an hour north of Birmingham or whatever, and you get into the the green, but people always think of Alabama as maybe being like South Georgia, where it's just flat and farms and nothing, you know. Oh, yeah. um, but uh, in Northern Alabama, like north of uh, I guess like Gadsden and um, and uh, I'm blanking on the other city right now, and I don't know why. But anyway, Birmingham, Gaston sort of extended there on 20 up about an hour or so. You get into incredible, beautiful landscapes that are great for like weddings and events and all kinds of stuff. Um, like, I mean, that area of the country is unbelievable, right? It is. It's absolutely beautiful. We've got a little jewel just north of us, about 30 minutes, uh, called Little River Canyon. Uh, mouth park it's a national park and brother it's absolutely beautiful uh you know it's one of the prettiest places there is of course there's the soto falls and different places like that and there's venues all around those uh, we've actually got a good close friend of ours that's actually at the foot of the mountain there just below little river called dry creek chapel and uh absolutely great people uh have a beautiful venue i mean it's a real rustic style farm style venue but they can also you know they've got some stuff on the inside that their reception hall is just gorgeous yeah the it's just so slept on like i just feel like everybody is like has no idea that this little part of alabama is amazing um and i can't remember what town that i drove through there's a town there that like uh it sits in the middle of a lake um and it's like you basically it's 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 like you come in on on it from both sides and the town is actually almost like built a, like completely around this lake um, or inside of this lake, rather. You're um, and I probably talking about where we are, Center, Cedar Bluff area. Yes, uh, a Center, uh, what is it? Uh, Cedar Bluff. Cedar Bluff, that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's right on the lake. And uh, we actually, we're right across the lake from Cedar Bluff. So That's incredible. Yeah, yeah that area really of the country, place. unbelievable. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. I'm really fond of our little town. This is where I grew up. And I mean, man, it, it don't, it don't get any better than this. I guarantee you. Yeah, man. So, um, so as it pertains to, um, um, like your vision for your business, you're just starting out and, um, you, you know, I love talking to people that just start out because you're, I feel like people's intentions are the most pure in that particular moment. Like they have Absolutely. like a singular, sort of vision and they haven't had to um 
learn how to pivot quite yet as far as like, oh, we're going to do this or we're not going to do this or whatever. Um, like, and this is really cool because we're documenting this and like long term, we're going to be able to go back and listen to this and maybe have you back on again, like, and, and then revisit some of the information that's uh, actually being said here. But yeah, like, man, that, that would you, be cool. Kind of like yeah. time capsule type. Yeah, that's exactly. Cool. Yes. Yeah. So for you, like what, um, you know, what is, what is your like pie in the sky here for, um, for the mobile bar? You know, I own, this is my second, uh, business that I own and, uh, a little chemical company that, that we run. And this is kind of something we wanted to do on the side and just get our feet wet, you know, in the industry and have several friends that are in the industry now. And, and they were like, you know, this would be a great idea. Jump in and, you know, and come do this with us. Great, you know, so so we've done that. And really, uh, I've got two girls. And really what I would like to do is I would like to build this business and get them involved and get them to where they're kind of learning about what the real world is all about, but in a controlled setting, you know, to where they already know how hard it is to make a dollar you know, what it's like to deal with people, have customer service, have the, you know, the right manners and mannerisms to be able to deal with people. Uh, because, and that, that to me is a skill that is, uh, you know, undervalued uh, completely nowadays. People don't know how to talk to them. They don't. And I got to tell you, that warms my heart because I believe that that is one of the single um, uh, biggest problems with um our country um right now is that we we basically don't give our kids a chance to really learn what it's like to be an entrepreneur or learn how to um you know communicate with people and give people what they want and make them happy um you know from a, a service perspective uh, i grew up in a family of uh, grocers so my grandmother um has a long line of um being involved in the grocery business like several generations and so when my grandmother started her grocery business in my hometown uh my grandfather um you know put himself through uh electrical school and um you know and all sorts of uh other other different like mechanical refrigeration school uh so that he could handle all the things that were fixed and then all the kids my uncles and aunts worked in that restaurant or i mean sorry uh that grocery store and, um, and so they would work in that grocery store Aunt was in the, uh, in the bakery doing all the pastries and the, you know, the, the sliced meats and stuff. And then my grand, my, my dad was in, um, you know, the meat department with like the big cuts of meat and my un uncle, one uncle was over here in the produce and you get the idea. Oh yeah. That's um, cool to be able to have, you know, a family business like that and, you know, get everybody involved. And, you know, I think that really brings a family closer together. It can, um, it could, uh, it also teaches what you're saying, responsibility, being able to um, communicate with people, give people what they need, being able to understand that like, you know, um, there are alternative solutions to the traditional four year uh, college uh, model. Oh yeah, um, absolutely. Which is extremely broken in my opinion. <clears throat> but, um, like, you know, the amount of debt that people take on to go get these degrees that they can't make it back up on um, you know, uh, there's so many things that's wrong with, uh, youth of America these days. I think so oh, yeah. many people would uh, say. We, we but, could, we could go the whole podcast. Yeah. All, all that, so. It's true. Uh, you know, but, you know, but to be honest with you, um, you know, I think it's great that you're, um, you know, giving them an opportunity to sort of experience a family business thing, which is, I mean, if you think about it, back in the turn of the century, back in like, you know, the early 1900s and all the way through, you know, maybe up through the 50s and 60s, that was a lot of the way families um, operated. I mean, they had the family business and the, um, the sons and daughters came up through the family business and whether they stayed yeah. there and moved on to their, um, you know, to their own dreams or whatever, that was one thing, but uh, so many great uh, uh, contributors to society and, and, and entrepreneurs have all come up through the family business to keep the family business going. So you're absolutely, good on you. Yeah, you're that's absolutely good. right. I mean, that, that's, that's the ultimate goal there is, you know, no matter what my kids want to do. I mean, I've, I've got one that she's talking about. She wants to be a, you know, a teacher or something of that sort. And then I've got another that's wanting to be a veterinarian. So, you know, it, it's, 
it doesn't matter what they want to do. They've got to have these skills. So you're going to have to invest the time and money, no matter what it is you're doing. So to be able to do that, you know, this is just something that it kind of gets them started on that, I guess is what I want to, what I want to say. And if we can make people happy in the, you know, in the, the side of that, then great. You know, that, that's what it's all about. It's true. And uh, you know, Again, what a cool way to spend time with your kids and teach them life lessons. And, um, and uh, you know, uh, you know what, the good thing is, is that weddings, uh, even through a pandemic, are not going away. No, so no, no. there will always be a need um, in the wedding industry for even something that you do. So that's, uh, that's super cool. Side note, I have to ask about this truck. What year is it that's pulling it? If you, if you go to the Instagram page, um, Stumbling Stallion Mobile Bar, I think is the Instagram Yes. Um, yeah, just at Stumbling Stallion Mobile Bar. Um, there is this beautiful red and white Ford pickup truck. Tell me the year of that sucker. All right, she's a 78 uh, F100 is what it is. Uh, it's a little 302 truck with a C4 in it. Just standard truck, no power yeah. brakes, no air conditioning, you know, no, no bells and whistles. <laughs> but uh, when we actually started doing this with the, the horse trailer, I told my wife, I said, we need something to pull it with. You know, need something to kind of set it off and, you know, help, it, I guess, in a way, because it kind of just looks naked out there on its own, you know. Right. And uh, so something to kind of go along with that vintage feel. I know vintage vehicles have turned into a big thing now in the wedding industry as well. So, mm. you know, it was kind of a win-win for us to be able to do that because it helps me not only with customers and that sort of thing who are looking for both of those items together, Um but it also allows us to just pull up with the horse trailer and leave it. You know, we don't have to unhook. We don't have to do anything. Basically, you pull up, you set the, set the bar up itself, and you're good to go, you know. So, um, and it, it also helps with photo opportunities for, you know, our clients and customers and that sort of thing as well. Because, like I said, the uh, antique vehicle industry is kind of helping in the wedding industry now as well. So, it just kind of all ties in together. So, uh my uncle, who also worked in this grocery store, um, he was sort of involved. He was sort of uh, in charge of like inventory, I think, um, if I had to sum up his title in, in a sum of words. But he had this gold Ford that it has to be the near year that you had. Um, and he was known in our hometown by that gold Ford truck. And <laughs> so when I saw that, I was just like, oh, man. I was like, that is just like my uncle Larry's truck. Um, and, uh, you know, it was a, uh, uh, you know, I just have a, a fascination for old vehicles like that. So, um, well, I really I, appreciate that. And, you know, that, that it's also a work in progress. So we're, I've got boxes upon boxes in my shop now that we're going to restore this thing. I'm going to bring it back completely like she was when she was brand new. So she needs paint, you know, she needs some odds and ends and that sort of thing. So, uh, to be able to get her back, it's going to be a process. So that's what we're we're doing now. That's actually my winter project for this winter is to bring that thing back and have her looking brand new again. That's cool. So do you know how to do all of that work as far as on uh, on a truck, or are you having to outsource a lot of that work? No, actually, we do. I can do just about anything, uh, and not to brag or anything like that. But <laughs> that's that's just how it is. You know, I, I I've just always been that type of person. I'm not afraid to jump into something and and experience it and try it. And if I fail, then I fail. You know, I mean, then you just start over, and there's there's nothing you can't do that you can't start over and do it again. You know, mm -hmm. so um, uh, kind of a funny story. Me and uh, my two best friends in high school, this probably kept us out of a lot of trouble, but we had a, another four pickup like that. And that's what we were going to do is <clears throat> on the weekends, we would get together and we would play poker and drink beer and that sort of stuff. But we would also, we'd work on this pickup truck and there's a local drag strip around. That's what we wanted to do. We wanted to build this truck and run a drag strip and, and go have fun on the weekends. So mm -hmm. that kind of got us started in working with that old stuff. And, um, it was a really good life lesson for all of us, I think, because like I said, it kept us out of a lot of trouble. We went out ripping, roaring up on the roads and that sort of stuff. But we were also, you know, learning how to use our hands. And anytime we had questions, we had several resources to be able to go talk to people and say, hey, help us out. So um, I think that's lost nowadays and not to get too nostalgic or anything like that, but I think that's lost. I don't think a lot of kids do that now. So that's another 
thing to this is my youngest daughter, his name's Macy. She loves that pickup truck, just like what you're talking about. I mean, she's in love with it. So, you know, if, if one day I can build it and give it to her or something like that, then, you know, that'll make it all worth it. And if she can, you know, go out there and help me some and that sort of thing, uh, you know, that's what it's all about. It's true. Um, you know, something about a family business um, definitely strikes with me just because I am a product of one. Um, the good and the bad, um, but uh, but totally the product of, of that family business vibe. And that's something that um, I hold super dear to my heart um, as I, um, you know, do the things that I uh, pursue. Um, so I think it's really cool that you uh, had them in mind and, and tying the whole family together. Uh, one thing we haven't talked about is um, your wife. Uh, what's her role in all of this? You know, I'm, I'm really not a tech savvy guy. So that's one of the few things that I don't know anything about. So she has really took a leading role in our Facebook and our Instagram and that sort of stuff, like getting all that set up and uh, mm -hmm. going to be working on the Google page and trying to get all that stuff going. And I mean, heck, she had to set this thing up for me to be able to talk to you today because I have <laughs> But uh but so, you know, she's done that. And she's also helped me in any time that we had anything to do with the horse trailer as far as putting it together. And we actually did a fall festival back um, well, earlier this month, I guess the first part of this month uh, in center. We have a yearly fall festival. And this is another way to get our name out there. We did that. And we kind of tied the kids in with it as well as uh, made a bunch of cupcakes and let them go out and sell cupcakes out of the mobile bars, you know, as we gave out flyers and stuff telling who we are. So, uh you know, it was, she does a lot. I mean, she really does. And she's in school right now. She's kind of pursuing her own dreams. So um, it, it's it's really cool to have her be a part of this. And like I said, when we were building this thing, she was right out there with me a lot of nights, you know, late when we were working and, and doing that sort of stuff. Cause we had to put a whole new skin on this thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes two hands just aren't enough. You know, you got to have more. And She's really good at that kind of stuff. And I mean, she helped me decorate and all that stuff because I'm not the decorating type guy, you know. So, uh, <laughs> but but she's she's really good. She, she's done a lot to help us out. But I would say the biggest role right now beyond the actual build itself is, you know, the social media side of it. Because as I said, I, man, I, brother, I don't know what I'm doing. You know, I'm just yeah. out here. I, I, I kind of turn that over to her and let her have it. Well, you know, marketing... Um, in today's world is um, definitely a big thing. Um, uh, and having, uh, you know, having somebody, you know, in house, it's uh, social media whiz like your wife probably really helps uh, with that whole process. So that's nice. You can focus on the builds. She can focus on getting the work. And then I guess whenever you guys actually do um, have the bar go out, are you um, are you guys actually there on site running the bar or is it, um, it, do you guys actually hire help to sort of run the actual uh, bar type situation? Yeah. So we're neither one of us are bartenders. Uh, you know, we really don't know that side of the business. So we've got several friends that, that work in that industry. So, you know, we have a, a ability to be able to call them and say, Hey, you know, would you guys like to work on, you know, your off days or whatever. So we've had to network several different bartenders, because you never know what schedules are going to be. But as far as us, we don't go out and we don't work the bar. Now I'll go out and set it up and I'll help in any way, shape or form that needs to be done. But as far as the actual pouring of the drinks, I leave that to a professional. And how does, um, how does um, just because I'm not in the liquor business, um, how does the liquor license thing work with uh, somebody like you as far as like being a mobile bar? Like what sort of hoops do you have to jump through to get to where you're, you know, you're certified and bona fide, so to speak. Okay, so here's how it works. Most venues actually want a licensed bartender. So uh, we've got all that care, you know, took care of as far as with our bartenders. But now on uh, the liquor side of it, say you're having a wedding and you say, hey, I, I, you know, I'd really like to have your bar. Basically what we are, we're basically just a rep. So you'll call us and say, hey, I want to rent your bar. And you know, a lot of times the conversation goes into exactly what you're asking is, hey, how do you, how do we get our alcohol? So what we do is we provide a courier service. So I'll tell you, say, hey, you know, you can call this number. You can call any liquor store you want. Tell them exactly what you want. Go ahead and order it, pay for it, all that good stuff. We will get it, ice it down, have it ready to go for you. But as far as me going and actually purchasing the liquor and bringing it to your event, we can't do that because if we do, it's called bootlegging. So 
you know, we don't want to get into that at, at all. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the liquor purchasing itself has to be done by the wedding party or the planner or somebody of that sort uh, that is, you know, with the wedding. So we're just basically just the rental of the bar itself and the bartending service as well as the courier service. That's cool. Um, it's, uh, it seems like that, um, that would be, yeah, I mean, that would obviously be cool. Like you could just rent some, if you're, say you're up on a hillside somewhere and you're nowhere close to a venue or anything like that, uh, having this mobile bar that's, you know, being pulled by, you know, an F100 uh, can uh, basically get to basically anywhere you want want a bar to go <laughs> exactly and that, i mean that's the thing about these uh farm venues and that sort of stuff a lot of them you know they want the whole reception to be in the field or you know right there close by so there may not be a bar that's available you know for that sort of thing so we're able to cater to that and also you know even places that do have a regular bar we're able to say all right you know here's a twist on that here's something that it's going to give you some really great photo opportunities, mm -hmm. you know, and really be the talk of, of the reception besides the wedding party itself. You know, I mean, so it, it's really unique and it's something different that not everybody has seen or been around. And I'm sure the truck alone probably gets a lot of photos because it's just so cool. I mean, people probably want to hop in the truck and take a photo, right? I mean, that's man. When that's, we go to these open houses, you wouldn't believe the guys that come up to me. It's like, hey, man, what's it take to buy the truck? And I'm like, look, it's not for sale. <laughs> <laughs> I, I appreciate it. You know that. You know, there's no better flattery than that. You know, than somebody actually coming up and wanting to buy it. But it's like, you know, it's it, she's not for sale. Just just leave her alone. You know, just you look at it, do whatever you want. But just leave her be. But. Yeah, well, it does. I'm, it does offer some really cool photo opportunities. Right. Yeah. I mean, it it uh it makes perfect sense. I mean, it's such a cool truck, and you know, it really, like you said, it adds to the vibe. It's just not some trailer you drop, you know. Exactly. Um. And uh. And you know, that was really good. Um. Sort of branding and marketing on your part because, you know, that truck tying into the the bar itself um really makes for a beautiful like one two, um punch uh as far as like what you get um. Uh, not to mention the, you know, you could probably do something with the bed of the truck too. You could probably do all kinds of things, whether it's photos or just like, you know, build outs for uh, larger containers for alcohol or whatever, you know? Oh yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, well, that's really cool, man. I mean, I think this is, uh, you know, when, like I said, when I stumbled across your Instagram, I just thought this was so cool. And being that I know that you're in the beginning stages of your, um, of your business, um, I just thought it was be so cool if we could get you on here and um, and uh, let people know about what you do. So in light of that, um, and speaking of you, um, I always like to do this thing um, uh, towards the end here um, as we as we wrap about you personally. I just like throw some questions off at you and. Um, uh, and just so people get to know who you are, because we know in this business, it's, you know, it's equally about what you provide, but also who you are and what you stand for and, oh, absolutely, and, um, yeah. and your overall persona, you know? So without further ado, I'm going to ask a bunch of questions and we're just going to see how, we'll see where this goes and, uh, uh -huh. don't worry, they're all going to be. So, um, give me, uh, uh, do you have like a, a, like a favorite band or, uh, like a song or anything like that that sort of like comes to mind? Yeah, actually, uh, me and my youngest daughter, we stumbled across a guy not too long ago named Larry Fleet. And I don't know if you guys know who Larry Fleet is or not. Uh, he's kind of a country style artist, uh, but he does uh -huh. a song called Working Man. And it really kind of personifies, I guess, who I am uh, in a sense. So more into the country genre, I guess, more than anything, I'll listen to anything. Uh, sure. I mean, anything from, you know, us. 70s rock uh, through the hair bands in the 80s all the way up to you know today so uh but really the the country vibe has always been there for me and that's just kind of kind of who i am now would you say uh for people that maybe don't know who this artist is could you compare them to another artist as far as what they sound like are they like in the luke bryan world of country or are they in like the george jones world of country or maybe even like Sturgill Simpson or uh yeah you know. it would probably be more towards the Sturgill Simpson Cody Jinks type cool. deal um yeah. so uh 
he's kind of a, a newer guy. You, not really, I guess, a whole lot of people really know about him. Go check him out uh, here on YouTube or anything like that. He's he's really a great guy, and he's really got a great voice. Wow, and uh, that's that's great. So if you were going to have one last meal on this world, what would it be and why? Oh, man, one last meal on this earth. Probably crab legs. Uh, I'm a big, yeah, I'm a big crab leg guy. So um, I I don't really know why. It's just always been something that I've really, really liked. Uh, So, you know, I'm I'm a big seafood person. Man, listen, when I was growing up, if we were going to Red Lobster, that was something big had happened. Somebody had gotten a promotion. Somebody had just made a lot of money. Uh, Somebody had graduated. It was like, um, and before that, um, before I found out of the world, the wonderful world of uh, Red Lobster as a rural Indiana kid um, or, and Georgia kid, um, kind of split both ways. Um, uh, in my super younger years, if something really big was happening, we would go to the Sizzling. So, <laughs> yeah. so as you know, yeah, so they don't know about Western Sizzling. No, though. man. <laughs> If you were, if we were going to the sizzling, I mean, we, something had happened and it was major and it was great. And it was going to be a party. Like that oh, was yeah. like, if we were going to sizzling to throw down on a steak or a baked potato or whatever it was, that was the, uh, that was the treat of the month or maybe even the year in some cases. Yeah, bro. Um, that's the way we were growing up. I mean, as a, as a kid every year for my birthday, that's what I wanted. I wanted red lobster. You know, this, yeah. that was like the big thing. I don't care if I get a present. I don't care. I just want to go to Red Lobster and eat. You know? and I Give can me eat those weight and biscuits and all that kind of stuff. That's right. Give me those cheese biscuits, you know? That's right. <laughs> oh, man, that's so good. Uh, I love it. Uh, crab legs, great answer. Um, <laughs> do, are, you, um, are, you much, uh, are you much of a coffee person or a tea person? Uh, more of a tea person. I really don't like coffee. I've uh, never been wow. a coffee guy. I'm You're more of a Coca-Cola two. guy. So, this is the second time this has happened. Oh, really? Uh, oh, everybody always says coffee. You're the second person to say tea. Yeah, I, I really like sweet tea. Of course, growing up in the South, that's that's our go-to, you know. So, mm-hmm. uh, But really, other than that, Coca-Cola. Uh, I've always drank Coca-Cola like crazy. So that's always kind of really been my go-to. I can wake up in the morning, first thing, drink me a Coke, and, and I can get <laughs> I'm good to go. I love this. Uh, this is so great. Do you uh, do you watch any sports or anything? Do you have like a favorite sports team? Yeah, uh, of course. Living in Alabama, I'm I'm roll tied all the way. Um, and of course, uh, we don't have a baseball team. I've always loved baseball. My Braves let me down last week, and uh, just just kill me, brother. I mean, just kill me. Like uh, we got to win one out of three, just one, and we couldn't pull it off. But you know, I you know, I'll be back I, next spring. Next, listen, baseball is dead to me until April. (laughs) (laughs) Nothing matters. I don't care what happens aside from maybe Freddie winning the NL MVP. Did he win that yet? Is that? Uh, They've got him up for player of the year right now. I haven't heard about the MVP. Uh, Yeah. Um, Yeah. uh, Anyway, like I just, uh, I can't. Like I, I watched every game, almost every game of that series. And, uh, I, there were so many chances we could have closed that out. And I, oh, yeah. oh, being, I live in Atlanta for those who are in the podcast world and they don't know that I live in Atlanta, or maybe this is your first time here. Thank you for being here. Uh, I live in Atlanta and the Braves have been um, my obsession for a very long time. And it just, you know, you just, even though we got a young team and things are developing and all that kind of stuff, you know, and, and they're learning and we lost four starters or five starters. Oh yeah. And we still made it to the NLCS and, and took the LA Dodgers to game seven um, of the um, NLCS. Like I, you got to find a way, you got <laughs> to find exactly a way right. to do it. And, you know, that's just when, you know, um, really experience of being there really helps, you know, um, there is no, you know, there's no substitute for being in the pressure cooker in the moment, you know, and some people have had, you know, the, the Dodgers have been there for many years now and they, oh, haven't, yeah. they haven't quite cracked the code of winning the world series with this particular team, but you, you know, uh, the difference in experience really showed, um, in that moment, but man, you're right. Uh, watching those pitchers throw and, and doing the things they did. Um, it's just, our bats went quiet the last three games and that kind of, 
that yeah, kind of that kind of that really it. hurt us. Hats off to the pitchers though for doing an incredible job through that whole thing, and um, uh, I just can't wait for Soroka to come back to join Ian and Fre- uh, Ian Anderson and Freed and uh, and Bryce Wilson showed up. Like I've been oh, yeah. waiting for him to. Who come would have thought that, right? Yeah, well, I've been waiting for him because I knew he was great, um, you know, and he was one of the ones that, like, had come up that had not had good showings that I was kind of baffled about because I just felt like, okay, I'm really nerding out here, so sorry. Uh, no, but like, uh, but, <clears throat> but Bryce has been somebody that I knew that had the, the wherewithal to be that pitcher. And for him to do that on the national stage um, – you know, playing against the Dodgers, which is like the best lineup in all of baseball. Um, you know, that just showed me that he's big time and he's like, you know, he could be, he could be. Oh, he's, that, yeah. The, he could be in the rotation. Be put in that stage and that pressure cooker and, and come out and perform the way he did, that, is, that was phenomenal. I, I was hoping we'd get one go round through the lineup with him. You know, if we could get through three innings with him, I was, I was going to be happy. And for him to come out and do what he'd done, it was, yeah. it was amazing. It was incredible. Uh, I mean, I as much as I hate that the Braves are not in the World Series, and as much as I hate that the Braves are uh, not um, uh, having the opportunity to win the World Series, uh, I'm very happy for the baseball season. It definitely gave me um, a breath of fresh air through all this COVID stuff. Um, so it, it felt good. Um, hey, uh, so another question for you. Are, are you a reader by chance? Do you like to read anything in, in particular? You know, I'm... I do read, but I'm more of a – I'm a big-time history buff. I've always been a big history buff. So, what era of um, history? Do I know? What era of history? You know, I will listen to anything from, like, the Civil War – well, actually, the Revolutionary War era all the way up to today. So, I'm really fascinated with military history and American history more than mm-hmm. I am so much as world history. Um, but, but, yeah, that that's my big thing. So, really – um, YouTube videos and that sort of stuff. I, like I said, I own another business and we do a lot of delivery. So I'll be out on the road with my headphones in and listening to history podcasts or history programs or lectures of all things, you know. So, um, I, I'm, you know, talking about nerding out, I guess that, that's kind of the way, the way I am right now. That's, that's my, you know, my go-to. So that's awesome. And uh, final question for today. If, uh, if you could give anyone one piece of advice um, that could make their life better, what would it be? Man, go for it. No matter what it is, you know, whatever you want to do in life, go for it. Don't, don't sit and wait because, um, you know, I was that way. I worked, uh, you know, a, a shift job for years and years and years. And uh, then I left and I went to work for another company and started all over doing that all over again. I uh, had the opportunity to buy a small business and try to run it and bring it back to where it was. So <clears throat> we did that and it, it has, you know, it has changed everything about who we are and what we're out to do. And we're just trying to grow upon that with this bar. Um, so really the, wow. the one thing is, I guess I can tell anybody is if, if you want something, go get it. Nothing's going to be handed to you. Just go out there, put in the time, put in the effort and go get it. I love this. Um, I love that um, that is your advice because that's usually one of the first things that comes out of my mouth is just to go for it. What do you have to lose? I mean, you know, what do you, I mean, you just, you, you can't live life in um, uh, one of the reasons why I'm in the place that I'm in right now is because I went for it. And, um, and yeah, along the way, a lot of failures, a lot of, a lot of screw ups, a lot of like near, near endings of uh, what I'm doing now. And, um, but I would have never known if I wouldn't have just tried, you know, and just took the step. And um, so I tell that to people all the time. I'm like, listen, make a plan and just go for it. And, you know, be adaptable, but just go for it. Because otherwise you're going to wake up when you're 70 year old, 70 year old one day, and maybe you got a grandchild on your knee and they're going to look at you and they're going to, you're going to ask them what they want to do with their life. And, um, you're not going to be able to even relate with the kid for trying to, in, you know, inspire them to go and, 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 you know, and achieve their dreams because you never did. That's it. Know? So that's it, brother. So yeah, I, go for it. I hear it. I love it. Well, man, 
Justin, thank you so much for being here. Everybody get on Instagram right now and go and follow Stumbling Stallion Mobile Bar and make sure you, uh, make sure you find them on Instagram. Um, they got all sorts of uh, good stuff coming uh, their way soon. And go look at that pickup truck because it's amazing. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. And, um, uh, but that's it for this episode of Southern Wedding Professionals. Thank you. I'm Jacob and subscribe to this podcast if you have not done that yet. And uh, be sure and check out our YouTube series. Um, just type in Southern Wedding Professionals on YouTube. It'll pop right up. Go ahead and subscribe. You can see the video of this um, interaction here. And, uh, you know, we love you for doing it. So, and if you know somebody that needs to be highlighted, that you think they just have the coolest business in the world and it's in the wedding industry or the event industry, definitely let us know. Drop us an email at southernweddingprofessionals at gmail.com. My name is Jacob Deaton. Thanks so much for being here. See you next time.